Disclaimer, this answer is for explanation purpose only, not written according to the Cambridge Assessment International Examination Marking Scheme. Evaluate the view that material factors are the main influence on educational achievement. 26 Marks There are various factors which may influence the educational attainment of a pupil, and one of those are material factors. Mainly, traditional Marxist approaches tend to focus more on materialist explanations of poverty and deprivation among the lower social classes, portraying that to be their main source of underachievement. Material deprivation argument focuses on how a lack of material resources leads the working classes to underachieve, whereas since the middle classes are wealthy they do not face the same issues and thus perform better. Due to an inability to afford nutritious food, or have sufficient meals throughout the day, working class students may lack nutrition which can translate itself into poor concentration levels, and lead them to take sick leaves more often. In this case, they end up missing educational content which reflects itself in their performance. Moreover, there may be a lack of separate study facilities at their home, which can make it difficult for them to study. Similarly, the area that they live in may be disadvantaged in terms of sanitation, drug abuse, crime rate or other communal facilities such as libraries. Working class children may also need to work to supplement their family income which means that their attention and time is quite divided leading to their education performance to fall. Whereas middle class students have an abundance of resources at their disposal, ranging from electronic devices, tutors, private facilities and better nutrition, all of which contributes to them performing better. A separate line of explanation which revolves around social class and underachievement caters to cultural factors such as parental attitudes, speech codes and cultural capital. Working class students are culturally deprived in many ways, one of which may be their parental attitudes, as pointed out by Douglas. Working class parents may offer little or no encouragement towards their child's education, rather might actively demotivate them whereas middle-class pupils have all the support they may require from their parents. Similarly, working-class children may have an attitude that is inclined towards immediate gratification, they would leave school and start earning at the earliest opportunity. On the flip side, middle-class students are oriented more towards deferred gratification and understand the importance of working hard during their educational years. This can also help explain the difference that exists in terms of educational attainment of both classes. Another cultural factor worthy of note when it comes to differential achievement of social class is of speech codes. Bernstein proposed that there are two types of speed codes, elaborated and restricted. Elaborated codes are more complex and independent of context, in short they are the language of the education system. The restricted codes are much simpler everyday language which is context dependent. While the middle classes are fluent in both codes and so can easily adjust to the learning environment of the school, working class students have to first learn the elaborated codes before they actually start grasping any material. This would mean that working class students are set back because of this language issue which negatively affects their educational attainment. If we delve further into exploring the various factors that influence the educational achievement of a pupil, it can be seen that the ethnicity of a student plays a major role in determining whether they succeed or not. Certain ethnic cultures tend to place more of an emphasis on educational achievement and success whereas some ethnicities may have practices that are not in line with the demands of the system. For example, Chinese mothers are tiger mothers and constantly push their child towards high achievement. And as noted by Ku this may be a potential reason behind Chinese pupils scoring better than their peers of other ethnicities, regardless of social class. Similarly, the performance of black Caribbean pupils is weakened by their poor parenting and the strong anti-school attitude that exists within this ethnicity. Furthermore, it is important to note that the construction of the curriculum may be ethnocentric, which means that it might be biased in favor of the majority ethnicity the white ethnicity. The curriculum being taught might assume something to be common knowledge even though it may not be so for the people from diverse ethnic minority backgrounds. The teaching practices, expectations, testing mechanism may all be based on the cultural norms of one particular ethnic group, thus disadvantaging those from minority ethnic cultures. Additionally, 
Another major factor influencing educational attainment may be gender of the pupil. From a young age girls and boys are gender socialized intro different roles and this eventually translates not only in their subject choice but also their performance. At the same time, it should be considered that in recent times there has been a feminization of schooling in terms of teaching practices which ends up benefiting female students and may lead to male underachievement. There are a range of female-friendly teaching practices that have largely taken over and it is mostly female teachers that can be seen, thus leading to a lack of role models for boys, which can lead to disinterest and eventually a drop in grades. Moreover, one line of explanation that applies to all three, class, gender, ethnicity, focuses on the effect of in-school factors on educational performance. In-school factors include teacher attitudes, labeling, student subcultures and practices such as setting, streaming and banding. The way a teacher labels a student can not only affect the student's self-perception but also their beliefs about the role of education. Where teachers make judgments about the worth of students this shows in their attitudes towards that student and leads to what is known as self-fulfilling prophecy. For example, a student who is constantly labeled as dumb by their teacher, or looked down upon will eventually start to have the same view about their own self and would stop putting an effort to try and negate that label. Similarly, Nash found that teachers' expectations are crucial in determining a student's success or worth. Ability grouping can affect a child's performance both positively and negatively. Those students placed in a lower stream or set may not see themselves as worthy and their teachers may put in less effort while teaching them which would mean that the achievement of these students would continue to fall. Whereas those in top streams and sets develop positive self-esteem because of which they work harder and are thus able to perform better. While material factors pertaining to social class are definitely important in determining a student's educational performance, there are many other factors whose influence cannot be ignored. Moreover, the interrelationship between class, gender and ethnicity is too complex for it to be reduced to only one factor. Approximately, 1,100 words. Happy learning, thank you.